All right, so let's take a look at the digestive tract. You have the parotid salivary glands, the submandibular gland. Here is your lower mandible, okay? Um, and here is your tongue. And then you have sublingual salivary glands. So the process of digestion, chemical breakdown happens with your teeth and the tongue. And then you chew, 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 you'll swallow and the food will form a bolus and it should go down the esophagus. If it accidentally goes down the wrong pipe, as we call it, because the epiglottis right here forgot to close. And in kids that hasn't fully developed, so sometimes they'll choke. But if your food goes down the wrong pipe, you'll try to cough it back up and you'll try to expel it out. But if it does continue going down the esophagus, then it'll make its way. Here's the liver but it doesn't go to the liver first. I'm just gonna move the liver out of the way. It actually goes to the stomach. Okay, so it's a little J-shaped. And if you open up the stomach, it actually has these little compartments called the rugae, which I'll do uh, uh, in another video here. After it goes into the stomach, it takes about 30 minutes for your brain to realize that it's full and it'll start slowly opening up this pyloric sphincter right here. You have a cardiac sphincter here, so that's why when people think of uh, when they get heartburn, it's actually right in here. But the pyloric sphincter, it will start slowly opening up and it'll allow the food to go into the small intestine, okay? And the first part is called the duodenum. And then you get different sections that will contribute. Here's your pancreas, if you look at that. And again, the pancreas contributes its digestive uh, enzymes to break down food, but it's also responsible for insulin and glucagon production in the islets of Langerhans. Here is the liver that sits on the right side, and inside there you have the gallbladder that's embedded in there. That will help break down fats. And then once it makes its way to, on, to the duodenum, then it goes into the jejunum and then the ileum. So the small intestine is where most nutrient absorption will take place. Here's the ileum and the ileocecal valve. Okay, so this part is the cecum. Here's the appendix that we don't really use anymore, but when we used to eat twigs and branches, <laughs> that was something that uh, helped digest that, but obviously we don't do that anymore. So there's the cecum. There's the ascending colon. There's the transverse colon. There's the descending colon. Here's the sigmoid colon. Here's the rectum. And then hasta la vista. It goes into the toilet, right? These little, this white right here, we call this holstrums. And it causes that, those little divots in there to increase the surface area, okay? Yeah, and there's the digestive tract.